Welcome back. We are on video slides number 13 through 20, and this is the information for Wednesday, the, excuse me, Tuesday the 17th. Tuesday the 17th, and we are picking up with slide number 13. Um, I just want to kind of point out again um, that a lot of times you will see these different forces, certainly when we're looking at net forces or force diagrams and things like that, the abbreviated, the capital F means force, and then you might see GRAV for gravity, capital F net for net forces, force app for applied forces, frick, norm. Um, there's quite a few of them, but those are some of the common ones. So if you're looking at some of those Quizlets or GIMP kits and things, and you're like, wait, what is this? That's kind of just the way that they abbreviate those so that you're not filling up that whole diagram with all kinds of writing and stuff. All right, so we left off um, last time with inertia, and inertia is Newton's first law of motion, and I call it the lazy law. Um, an object at rest is going to stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion. It's going to take an outside force, so something stronger to unbalance those forces and get something to change its motion. Right, so balanced forces mean that things are canceling each other out. There are forces that are working in opposite directions, um, either pointing together or pointing apart. Um, just like gravity and normal force typically balance each other out. Okay. Um, okay. So there's some things that can work against motion, and that's friction. So a force that occurs when two objects that are in contact. Um, interact by sliding past each other. And there's a lot of different kinds of friction. Just know that in general, friction is going to be the force that works against the applied force and typically is going to work against the motion. So again, here's our vector arrows. If motion is to the right, then friction is going to be working left. Um, there is a great song that will get stuck in your head. It's usually um, some people's favorite. It's kind of an old um, has kind of a funny little tune and like tint to the music in a way, um, but it will definitely stick in your head and it's a really good one. So hopefully you enjoy it. Okay, so a special type of friction is known as drag. Right? This is when an object is going through a fluid. So for example, a gas or a liquid. So anytime, again, I've given the example, if you stick your hand out the window, your arm is experiencing that drag, right, which is dragging your arm back, that drag of that air pushing against you. You're in the car that's moving this way, but friction's working against you. Um, this is a huge idea in anything that's like a speed event, whether you're talking um, NASCAR, whether you're talking even like humans running like in track, um, there's a reason that um, track athletes don't wear like big, huge, bulky clothes, right? They don't have big billowing t-shirts and things. They look like they're almost running in bathing suits these days, right? They're like in all the skin tight material because they don't want anything to be able to get that air and slow them down, working against their forward motion. Same thing with NASCAR, right? They try to make the cars as aerodynamic as possible because if you can reduce friction, you don't have to increase your power or increase your fuel that you're using or anything like that you just are able to go faster because there's less working against you. So it's kind of working smarter, not harder, in a way. So trying to get rid of the amount of friction or reduce it in a lot of situations when you're talking speed and efficiency, um, that's the key. That's kind of what those disciplines or those um, areas are trying to do. Okay. All right, so baseball. I see lift, which is a form of air resistance. So remember with normal force, you have to have an object that is a solid against a solid. If I have something that's just in free fall, right, then I am not going to be able to, um, to have that normal force. And so at that point, air resistance is going to be working on it. Right? And so sometimes we will call that air resistance if it's going upward as lift. Okay, So we have the lift, and then we have the weight of gravity pulling down. And I know that the ball is going this way right? if drag is working it against the, the motion of that ball. 
So hopefully you can see this. Um, I'm going to have it linked in Google Classroom so you can kind of play with it also. Um, but here's just a box, and um, right now it says air drag, which is drag or air resistance, is 20 newtons and weight is 20 newtons. These little vectors are even. I'm going to change and add a little bit of air resistance and watch how the vector arrow goes really, really big when I put that um, below, uh, the parachute on there for a second. All right, I'm going to change and make it now this block so you can see the arrows better. Notice that the arrows are equal and my strengths are equal. 200 newtons, 200 newtons. Okay. I am also going to now put a smaller parachute and so you're going to see the air resistance go down and notice how the vector arrows are going to balance each other out. The weight is still 200 newtons so it's going to take a little bit for that parachute to balance out. You get no change in motion, so these forces are balanced, but they are equal. So we're getting very close to the ground, and look what changes from air resistance to normal force once it's the solid to a solid. So let me go back and do all that again now that you're kind of aware of what's going on. So I'm going to change it to my brick. And you can see they are uneven. The vector arrows are trying to balance out, and this is accelerating, speeding up as it's going down. Watch what happens. The arrows are just about even now, and my velocity is not changing. I'm not speeding up. I'm not slowing down. I'm going to give it a parachute, try to slow this down, right? And again, as I land, the air resistance changes to normal force, okay? Let's try it again. So, I like the brick because you can see the arrows better. Okay, so 200 up, 200 down, they cancel each other out. This is moving. These balanced forces, um, or these forces are balanced, but there's still motion, all right? It's just not changing motion. So it's like cruise control. But if I change, I have less air resistance, so now the air resistance is going to get balanced out, and we're going to reach 200 newtons again, and when that happens, my forces are balanced, I have no acceleration, I have no change in that motion. Yeah, I have motion, but just no change in it. And again, as soon as I am solid to solid, I have normal forces at work. So that will be in there, um, and you can play around with that, and usually that kind of helps people um, see what's going on. Um, Continuing with our, th our forces that will oppose motion, um, friction and drag are going to affect things differently. So um, they may even cause moving objects to slow to a stop unless another force is exerted. So if I push this, it moves, but it doesn't keep moving. It's going to stop eventually, right? Actually, pretty quickly, right? So if I apply a small force, I can get it to move, but it's not going to move indefinitely because there's friction between this book, or you know, my book and the table, right? If I could reduce the amount of friction, then I could, with the same force, that book would just keep on going, right? Um, when we are talking air resistance, um, the greater the surface area will have an impact. So these are two equal pieces of paper, same size and shape, just copy paper. I'm gonna crinkle this one and reduce the air uh, excuse me, reduce the surface area that it has, um, the air can act on it, all right? If I drop these from equal heights, predict which one you think is going to land first. Pick the white ball or the yellow flat paper. All right, so now let's do it. They have the same weight, right? They're the same thing. They have the same mass, so they have the same weight even. Gravity's pulling down on them even, but just like um, on the video that we watched um, to start us, if they have the same mass, they definitely should be getting pulled the same, right? We know that without air, things that have different masses even will get pulled differently, right? It's not that gravity's changed, it's that the air is acting on them differently. So if we can get rid of air, we could get rid of that difference. 
but we don't want to get rid of air because we would not be able to breathe, right? That could be a major problem. So air resistance is all about surface area and how much air is able to lift up on that object, okay? So while things are in free fall, that's why you have something called lift working on them that is working against gravity. And you can see there's more lift, obviously, with this piece of paper with the big surface area versus this piece of paper with the small surface area. Every time. Now, if we would be able to get rid of the air from this environment in, in our room, then they should equally fall at the same rate because gravity is pulling them at the same rate. It's just that this one does not have as much resistance and so it appears that gravity is pulling it faster and stronger, but it's really not. Gravity is working the same. There isn't a dial or a switch for gravity that we can crank it up or reduce it. There's other things that are at work that cancel out gravity or don't cancel out gravity. Because if we go back to the idea of normal force, right, it's working perpendicular to solid to solid. But when we're at that slant, it's not canceling out all of gravity. Gravity feels stronger on that hill or on that slope because not all of it's being canceled by the normal force. And normally on a perpendicular um, area or, or surface, you're gonna feel that perfectly canceled out. And so that becomes a little bit um, distracting or a little confusing thinking, okay, well, sometimes it feels like gravity is stronger than another, but it's really not. It all has to do with some of those extra factors like air resistance, right, and surface area, or with normal force, the slope. Okay, so it's not gravity strength that changes, it's the, some of those other factors. Um, okay, so anytime you are applying a force, eventually friction is going to slow the object down. Okay, even if you apply the biggest force you can imagine, um, if you let things go long enough, if it has enough space and it's not gonna run into anything, eventually friction will slow it down. There are a few special situations that will kind of, the object could kind of move indefinitely. All right, the first one is puck on an air hockey table. So there's a small barrier of air through the tiny little holes on those tables that shoot up. And that puck is almost like floating or levitating. It's pushing up and creating just a really, really thin barrier. So when that happens, um, it's basically like you're removing the friction from that table because there really is no contact. I don't know if you can see my hands very good, but it's just hovering above it. So there's no contact. If there's no contact, there's no friction, okay? Or very, very little. Same thing with dry ice on a surface. It creates a barrier as that um, carbon dioxide, that solid carbon dioxide changes. It goes straight from a solid to a gas and it basically kind of creates a barrier so that there's no contact. Um, a car on an icy road. Um, this is kind of, we're getting close to that time of year, right? Even though we're going through this warm Indian summer kind of thing right now in November, um, it's coming, right? So a lot of times we've talked about friction as being a bad thing that we're trying to reduce it, like with NASCAR or racing, you're trying to go fast or you're trying to reduce the amount of friction because you want to go as fast forward and you don't want that friction to work against you. And so friction kind of gets a bad rap sometimes. Friction can be very, very beneficial and it actually can um, be very important to us in this situation, right? Or if we're walking on ice or we're driving on ice, we want that traction and that friction, which is why we put the grits. Um, not only is the, the grits kind of have some salt with them where it'll help dissolve and melt the ice, but it gives you that extra traction. If you're ever walking on your, if you have like hardwood floor or tile and you have socks on and you're running, you might slip, your foot might slip out um, because you don't have enough friction. If you guys see like those hospital socks that have like the um, little treads on the bottom, right? They don't want people falling in the hospital, right? That's a lawsuit waiting to happen. So they give you those goofy socks that have like little grippers on the bottom, okay? Um, so different things like that. If you think about it, sometimes we want to increase friction. Sometimes we want to decrease friction. Um, if we're trying to go fast, um, even like with a lot of moving parts, um, if you rub your hands together, 
right? You feel that friction. So hopefully you guys might be rubbing your hands together and feeling that as well. Anytime there's moving parts sliding past each other, you're gonna get some friction. So like in a motor, you don't want those pistons that are grinding and moving back and forth in your motor to get real hot because then they will lock up. So that's why we use motor oil to kind of keep that from happening, keep everything lubed up, reducing friction so that things can still move, but they can move freely, okay? Um, same thing in our joints. We have synovial fluid in our joints and that keeps our joints moving um, and being lubricated and able to move without causing us pain and things like that. So a lot of times we are trying to reduce friction, but when we're trying to keep from slipping, um, sometimes we need to increase friction. So it just depends on the situation. But back to a couple more examples um, where there's not much friction. Objects in space, there's no friction in space. So there are four really good examples of when you know you might experience a situation where there's very minimal friction. Most things around us are going to experience friction and a significant amount of it at that. Um, this is a really cool video, um, putting on glass, and I will have that link, so make sure you watch that. And all of these have in common the idea that there is no frictional force or very, very limited frictional force. Okay. If forces are unbalanced and do not cancel each other out, so we have those balanced forces, five and five, or five and five, as long as they're equal number, strength, and opposite direction, they're gonna cancel. But that's not realistic that we go through life and things are always perfectly balanced. So if the forces are not balanced, the object can either speed up, slow down, or change direction. And this is known as acceleration. Um, real quick, I want to get back. Make sure you watch the study jam and the brain pop. These are going to be shown very, very well for you. Um, and so remember, balance forces is like cruise control. It's going to stay constant. So if it's moving, the forces are still balanced and it's going to move at the same speed. If forces are unbalanced, you're going to cause it to speed up. Okay? So Keep that in mind. Balance means like cruise control. If it's moving, it's going to stay at a constant speed. If unbalanced forces, then it means you're speeding up or slowing down. All right, so here we have the bigger force of 80 newtons to the right and a smaller force of 40 newtons to the left. Notice the vector, it's big here, about half the size here, and it shows the direction that your wagon is moving. So this would be the resultant or the net force um, arrow. And finally, so if forces are unbalanced, the forces that are acting on the object are not equal. Obviously, that's what unbalanced means. This could be seen in several ways. So the applied force or thrust is greater than the friction or drag. So that means you're gonna get an acceleration in the direction of the, of the force. So if I'm pushing to the right and it's an unbalanced force stronger to the right, I'm gonna get motion to the right. If the friction or drag is greater, like when I am sliding my book, friction is going to eventually slow that down and it's going to win. And these situations can result in an object being moved in the direction of the stronger force. There are um, a few websites that are going to be linked in Google Classroom for you. And this is a kind of cool one. You can pick the arrows and um, put them, um, these squares are representing like one Newton of force. And so it's one, two, three, four, five, six Newtons to the right. And then I have this green one of two to the right. I'm gonna show the resultant, which is like the net forces. And so basically it's like lining these up and the purple one makes your resultant or your net force vector arrow. Um, this can also be done. Oops, let me reset it here. Oh, there we go. That helps make it a little bit bigger for you. Let me reset. Um, so let's go with the blue. We can also do this with vertical forces, so up and down forces. So if I make this one, one, two, three, four, up. 
and I make this one two down, and I hit show resultant, basically my green cancels out this much of my blue, and I'm left with my net force of the purple one. So I have a net force of two times. And you can see that resultant magnitude of two. Okay. Um, so this is a good one to play with. If you're going to do it, I would just do like up and down forces or left and right. Don't do both together because we're only looking at forces in one dimension right now. We're not looking at something like this where we end up with an angle. That will be for physics later on. So if I do something like this, the resultant is like that. We're not going to worry about two-dimensional direction. We are going to just look at one dimensional. So if you'll just do left and right, that would be a little bit more beneficial for what we're doing. So if I do this, one, two, three to the left, one, two, three to the right, what do you think the result of the net force is going to be? Hopefully you said zero, right? There would be none because these are balanced forces that cancel out. Now all I have to do is change direction here. And it's like lining these up because if they're in the same direction, you add them. If they were in opposite directions, oops, you subtract them. Okay? So when they're opposites, you subtract. When they are working in the same direction, you get to combine them. And that's kind of the gist of um, these net forces and your um, balanced and unbalanced forces. Let's look at one more. People tend to like this one as well. This is the FET Lab, that website. And there's actually a bunch of them. This is the net force one, but there's motion, there's friction, there's acceleration. So if you want to take a look at those, um, I would recommend that. But you can change these little guys. So this guy can pull with a force. So if you do this, do the sum of forces, the values, click those two boxes. Okay. Um, so each little guy pulls with 50 newtons of force. The mediums are 100, and the big guys are 150. And so you can set it up um, where you can see um, he's pulling 50 to the left, he's 150 to the right. The sum of the forces would be in the direction of the stronger force, and you can see that you subtract those to get 100. Always going to go in the direction of the stronger, and if they're in the same direction, you combine them. So 50 plus another 50 plus 100. So I get 200 newtons to the left here, and I can do um, the same thing here. I would combine this um, and that 150 and that 50 gives me 200 to the right. So now these forces are balanced. The forces are balanced and it's not moving, nothing's gonna happen. If I get rid of this little guy, we have 50 newtons to the right, 200 to the left, and I can see a sum of 150 newtons to the left. So which side do you think is going to win, the blue or the red? Hopefully you said blue. So you can change all those things and kind of play around with it. Um, please make sure that you click the sum of forces and the value so you can see those numbers. Um, but those are kind of the, the main ideas. Same direction you add them, opposite directions you subtract them. And again, don't memorize it, just think about it logically. Right? You're combining all you know the, the forces. So Obviously, you're pulling in the same direction. You're pooling your, your energy, your resources, your strength, and you're all going to be pulling together. Okay. Um, if it's not moving and forces are balanced, it's going to stay not moving. If it's moving and forces are balanced, it's going to stay at cruise control. It's going to stay at that constant speed. Okay. Um, if forces are unbalanced, like it is here, Obviously, it's going to go in the direction of the stronger force, and it's going to go, um, you know, that, that basically that side wins. Okay, uh, let's go back. And I'll have both of those posted for you. Um, 
so that you can play those. Um, I'll also have them under unit links because if you look at our last slide, there's a bunch of websites. And so I'm going to have a special link for this unit um, of materials, like extra websites that you can go to and play around with. So um, hopefully that will help. Um, we will get together the rest of this week and do some activity things and get you some practice with this material. So take care, let me know if you need something, and um, hopefully you have a great day.